Hello, my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates, and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of April 22nd, where this week it's interesting because we are just off of the heels of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which I hope brought something absolutely beautiful into your life. But keep in mind that whatever that stamp and that signature of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction brought into your life, you're also going to need to be taught about it. And you're going to have to put a little bit of work into that expansion. It's Taurus, right? You're going to work a little bit for what you got. But whatever that beautiful signature was that left for you in your um, particular chart, I am thrilled for you to actually be able to create something in the physical material world and have it be beautifully long lasting. Now, not only that, we have got a full moon happening in Scorpio doing this last minute clean out, bringing things to light that have maybe been hidden, you know, because it's like where we're at right now, we're on this road and the things have started. We're at this beautiful beginning of things, but it's like, hold on, we're trying to get started, but there's just some stuff under the carpet or there's, you know, we've got some things on the floor. We need to get them cleaned up and out of the way, or we won't be able to move forward. Forward. So we've definitely got that full mooning energy that is riding on us this week for sure. And if you're particularly lunar sensitive, this whole week, I think will really have your attention because it's a high lunar week. But we've also got Mercury coming out of its uh, retrograde. So Mercury will be coming direct. Now, you know, I don't get all excited just because Mercury came direct. It's good news. Some of the pressure release, I think, will be off. Some decisions will be in the clear to start making them coming forward. But I'll be a lot more excited when we get to May 13th and we see Mercury fully out of that post-retrograde shadow time. So we're going to still be keeping an eye on that. But, you know... Nonetheless, the energies are alive and well for Mercury coming direct this week. So everything this week, it's a very lunar and emotional week. And the way that I keep seeing it is like we have this... Um, kind of this spring on the inside of us, you know, and maybe over the last few weeks, you've been trying to be grounded and just breathe and calm down and not be impulsive about decisions you're making. But that spring has been getting tight, 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 tight. You know, if you've done all the yoga, all the breathing to just try and loosen it. But this week, that spring, instead of snapping and like losing its mind, is able to kind of unwind just a little bit, little bit, little bit every single day. Um, and then this full moon energy helps it to kind of release Mercury retro grade is like, okay, I'm clear with what I'm thinking. So if you're interested in finding out what this week has to offer for you, you want to stick around in this video. Now some housekeeping. The timestamps for every day of the week are going to be in the description box down below. So make sure you click down there and check it out and you can go to whatever day you need or you can just come back and visit the video. You know, if it's if it's Tuesday, you know, come back and visit Tuesday and then listen for Wednesday. You don't have to take the whole thing under one bite. Eat that little cake one little piece at a time, okay? Now other good news, I'm so excited. I've got a couple offers going for you. First of all, I love to collaborate with people a couple times a year that are also outside of just the astrological sphere. And so this time kicking off uh, May 6th, going all the way to May 12th, you'll get one beautiful week with my friend, Andrew Colombini. Talk about a name, Andrew Colombini. Let's say that. Oh my gosh, it's so foreign. You know, I have a ninth house son. I freaking love it. I'm like Colombini, right? Anyway, so where he's going to be hosting this summit, it's called the Personality Code. And I love it because he's bringing together different people. He's got astrology and fellow astrologers. Nadia Shah will be there, uh, Kira Sutherland, Sam Reynolds. There's plenty of us in the Astro crew joining in with Andrew, but he's also bringing together Enneagram. Um, human design. There's Myers-Briggs. So if you're interested in something like that, then this is going to be an awesome opportunity for you to join up with us. I mean, it's really kind of cool. And this is one of the first ones that I've done like this in terms of adding to a summit like this. And I think that you could really, really enjoy it. And it's about learning how to work with your personality, how to work with and understand yourself at a deeper level. And that's what we're doing here in the astrology community. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, I'm going to put my link in the description box down below. Jump in, check out the summit. It's going to be a really good time. Now, in terms of just that pure astro life, of course, the Astrology 101 and Astrology 102 digital course is still on sale for $25. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have left it on sale until the new courses are created. So click down there, 
get it. The new courses are in creation right now, but click down there, get it. If you are new and you need to learn and want more guidance, that's the thing that courses do. They give you guidance, a little bit of a structure, because I know what it's like to do the YouTube learning. You're clicking around, clicking around, putting different pieces together. But what happens when you get a course is you get some guidance and some structure. So if you're new, you need to get these planet science housings. You don't have your quadrants and hemispheres down, you know, or if you're a little bit more advanced and you're trying to get into the transits, you want to know about the oriental planets, what happens when you have um, an intercepted sign, these kinds of things. That's what that course 101 and 102, it's 12 courses that's going to take you through that information. So I would love for you to have that. Click in the description box down below and get it. And of course, come and join me starting this Saturday, the 27th, for the live YouTube five-day challenge. So if you've got something to say on YouTube and you want it to be efficient, you want it to be effective, you would like it to make you money, you want it to help your business, come and join me live and I will show you how to make content that not only speaks to your particular audience, it speaks to that algorithm as well so that you can get found here on YouTube. All right, housekeeping out, let's get into the week. And oh my goodness, you guys, I just have to tell you before we jump into the week, it is um, a lunar week. There's a lot going on with the moon sprinkled in with some bigger transits. And even at the time of recording this, I am just feeling it. As I'm recording this, the moon's actually in Leo, and I'm feeling it on the heels of this feria business here in Spain. You know, it's this beautiful flamenco festival, the dresses, the fire, the red. It is absolutely brilliant. If you've never seen anything about feria, I would encourage you to bring a little fire into your life. Just even look up a YouTube video because, oh, absolutely fantastic. I feel fiery even doing our, <laughs> doing our breakdown for the week. Okay, starting right here on Monday, we are not starting in a fire sign. <laughs> on Monday, we've got the moon traveling through the vibration of Libra. Okay, so we're starting out this week, this moon day looking for balance. We have questions of balance. We have questions of our relations. Am I in proper balance um, to the things I'm in relationship around me? Now, remember, if you've got a moon in Libra, like I do, you could be having your lunar return, right? So you want to look and see uh, when the moon is getting to the exact degree that your moon is at in your particular chart, because that will be your lunar return. And if you don't know anything about the lunar returns, I'll put that video at the end of this one so that you can check it out, okay? But we've got the moon traveling through Libra. Now it's interesting because the moon is going to oppose Venus, which is the ruling planet of this particular sign. So what this can feel like on Monday is we've got all of this springing kind of energy that's already going, waiting to just have that spring released a little bit. And you feel like you're not getting your way. You know, you're like, I don't know. I just, I need to be over here and you need to be over there. So it can feel like with that Venus and Aries, you're not doing it the way I want you to do it, or this is not happening the way I want it to be happening. So you can be feeling a bit frustrated. Now, typically, oppositions are relational. So it's like you and some other source is what your your insides are saying. That thing is not giving me what I want. That doesn't feel the way I want, right? That's not in alignment with my values. Now, the thing to remember when we're dealing with an opposition is they're already pulling away from each other. They're opposing, right? They're going in two different directions. So with an opposition, you want to integrate them. This is how you relieve that spring and that tension is integrate them. So see, where is the Venus? and Aries pointing you to something that you're like, yeah, I value this about myself, about my being or about something I directly find important, right? So where is Venus correct in that? But also with the moon in Libra, where is it like you can find the common ground between the two of them where it's like, yeah, okay, I understand I need to do this and I need to value this, but I can do it in a way that also allows me to emotionally stay integrated in my partnership. So you find these two in the middle and allow them to integrate. And then instead of getting this, this tension of just pulling apart, pulling apart, getting wider, making that spring within you tighter and tighter and tighter, they actually create a beautiful hook together where you start to see the balance of interdependence, which is actually a much more beautiful way to experience that, that energy. Whenever we're dealing with an opposition, whether it's one that's in your own personal chart or it's one that's in the transiting sky, remember when there is confusion and there is frustration and there's this lack of stability, it's because we lack an in integration. Find the sweet spot in between the two things you feel like you are in opposition to, okay? Now, later in the day, the moon is going to go into void, of course, and we've got a 
about a four hour void of course period going on. So you're going to have some time then to bring all of that energy down. When the moon is void, of course, we really don't want to be starting anything. You actually just want to bring things to a close. And this is why I also try and remind you during the week that we have so much more time to rest than we give ourselves credit for, right? There is time to put that thing down, to breathe, to do a five minute stretch video, to just do a two minute breathing thing, to say, nope, I'm not making any decisions for the next two hours. And not only is it me, you know, I'm not just being stubborn and saying, I'm not making any decisions for the next two hours. It's like self-care. It's like breathing. It's like getting in alignment with the universe to say for the next two hours, for the next four hours, I'm going to let life just do life without my like (laughs) imprint on it for a minute and see where the natural vibe lets things fall. It's a really lovely way, especially if you're feeling stuck on anything you've been opposing. Okay. Then on Tuesday, we're going to see that the moon here gets into the vibration of um, Scorpio. Now we're going to be getting ready for that Scorpio full moon later in the day. But on Tuesday, which is a Mars day anyways, Scorpio being an energy that is co-ruled by both Mars and Pluto, Tuesday is intense. Okay, we've got a little bit more intensity, but also just the movement of the moon out of this void, of course, position into Scorpio. We're starting at the depth. Now it's said that the moon is in fall in Scorpio because the moon wants to feel. It wants to feel deeply, right? But it doesn't want to feel to like hell and back <laughs> and Scorpio's like oh but we are we're going to the we're going to the roots moon you know <laughs> and the the planet has to get on board with how the sign would like to get things done so truly the intensity of Tuesday which don't mistake intensity for bad okay the intensity of Tuesday is that you're going to get to the depth of something really, really deep within you that has needed some attention. One of the biggest questions that I think any of us can do as a service to ourselves when the moon is in Scorpio is to ask, what are my motives behind what I'm doing? What are my motives? Not my intentions. I intend for this to go off very well, but why are you doing it in the first place? Why are you doing it in the first place? That is the question to ask here as this moon is traveling through Scorpio. Now, the other thing is, if you haven't watched your video on the full moon happening in Scorpio, I would really encourage you to go over and check that out because I put some questions to help guide you um, in the Scorpionic time at the beginning of that video, some of which are just questions where you have something subconsciously going on. I ask you the question and then it starts to like bubble up and you're like, yeah, wait a minute. The other thing I love about the moon in Scorpio is because it's such a depth and it drops beyond the space of just what's in your head. It like plummets to your soul and it asks you, what am I deeply, deeply connected to? What is my intuition? What is my psychic sense telling me? What is that emotion that's like just down here at the bottom, just going like this, trying to get and signal my attention? You know, it's a beautiful energy for sensuality, for sexuality. When is the last time you put on a little movement and music and let yourself be in the movement of experiencing yourself, experiencing, you know, when is the last time you checked in to see how strong your abdominal muscles? are when you do a twist or something like this from your hips. Ooh, that is an ab workout in like the most beautiful, sensual way. Spend the day maybe even walking from your hips, embodied in your hips. Allow that sway, allow that sexuality. You are all pieces, body, mind, spirit, and part of the body is being the sexual being that you are as well. So let's not lose that deep connection with that, okay? All right, now we get past that just a few hours and we get this full moon wrapping itself into Scorpio at four degrees. Again, for a more deeper view of that, go check out your full moon in Scorpio video and I broke down how it's gonna play out for you by different house as well. So you can check that out in the description box of that full moon in Scorpio video. I'll put it at the end, okay? All right, so we've got this full moon. Now the energy of the day has already been in that vibe of intensity. Okay, but the full moon here is again in opposition. So we learned this week that in the opposition, you don't want to let them stretch and stretch and stretch. Now, sometimes they're going to have to, but again, we're looking for where's the sweet spot in the middle where we can integrate these things so that they act as a hook and a hinge 
for interconnectedness. But this full moon with all the light on is asking us to end something, acknowledge something, or to make an adjustment. And the biggest adjustment it's asking us to acknowledge here is what needs to be detoxed out of our system. What is the deepest set of information that is presenting itself for you? Where do you have excess energy that is just, it's too much. It's keeping that spring within you really, really tight. It's like your vital organs, your vital being is not getting enough blood flow for you to really sustain. You know, you want to move from the space of existing to thriving, but there's something in the way. Now we've been on this road to this road to fresh starts. We're right at the beginning, but some Something is in the way and this hidden information has to be brought to the surface and illuminated so that you can get it out of the way. Now, I do want to flash you back to October 25th of 2022. Okay, I do talk about this in the full moon video, but I want to flash you back to then because that is when the cycle of what you need to see and what is being illuminated for you to pivot and acknowledge or adjust, that's when it started. So what did you start? October 25th, 2022, when there was the new moon eclipse happening at two degrees of Scorpio, you started something right then. You were deeply connected to it. Were you diagnosed with something? Did you begin a project? Did you find out you deeply loved something? Were you detoxing? What is it? Go back into your own story because that's where the astrology is really, really rich and yummy. Now we're gonna be under that vibration of the Scorpio moon all through Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is really truly captivated by the Scorpionic vibration. Now, as I'm looking here, it's this is nice, okay? The moon is gonna actually be in a nice conversation with Saturn, so it could be great for getting things done. This is a good work day on Saturday. Now, Mercury is going to be going direct just on Thursday, so I would say even here on Wednesday, even though this is a good connection of the moon with Saturn, if you can avoid making long-term commitments, just give Mercury a day. Actually, give Mercury like three days if you can, okay? We'll talk about that in just a second, but this is a good day to be grounded, get things done and feel a little bit more assured about your emotional life because as the moon and Saturn are in conversation, they're both in water energy. So there is something really working below the surface and you are tapped in, I think, to your intuition, your motives at this point, and also the reasons you would feel emotionally compelled to make any changes or pivots that you need to in your life. Okay, now when we get to Thursday, the 25th, we have got Mercury coming out of retrograde, which I don't know about you guys, but for some of us, this Mercury retrograde was a doozy, right? This was just a lot of backwards energy. Nobody, it wasn't like the end of the world came or anything like that. But I can't tell you how many clients I sat with from across the globe. That's what I love, across the globe, where they're like, yeah, my ex came back from 1992, girl. And I'm like, that is so funny. That is so good. Or just these projects. And you know, the thing I like about the retrogrades that I really realized this time is, yes, you get to go back over, review, re-edit all of these things. But sometimes we we still have these energetic connections to people, places, and things, you know, these cords, I have heard them called, and we don't know that they're there, right? So we need almost a retrograde to bring it back in to be like, hey, look, you are still connected to that. You're keeping it, you're getting rid of it. What are, what are you doing about it? Let's fine tune this. Or it brings something back and it's like, oh, I really do need to, I need to clean that up a little and fine tune that so that that's working really efficiently for me. So we see Mercury coming direct today. Now I like to remind people, and you're the people who I'm going to remind, <laughs> That even though Mercury is coming direct here on the 25th, that first of all, don't rush in. Don't rush in. This is Mercury in Aries. So the desire genuinely to rush in in the first place is already there. Because remember that spring's been getting really, really tight. And now it's going to start to loosen. So this desire to be like, oh my God, Mercury's out of retrograde. Thank God, let me go. Right? Ease up just a minute. Let Mercury come out of retrograde. Let him wake up, have his cosmic coffee, get his life together. I mean, think about it. When you come back from vacation, right? Do you want somebody running up to you at your office being like, while you were gone, you're going to be like, 
you know, you have to accept defeat. <laughs> so let's maybe welcome Mercury back with a little less defeat. Give it a couple days for the energy to get sorted. Let Mercury get its desk together for a minute, you know, and realize it's back at work. <laughs> and then you can push things forward. Now, you want to be looking at 15 degrees of Aries in your chart to see where Mercury is coming direct. Now, this retrograde has worked between 15 and 27 degrees. I should really say 27 and 15 degrees of, of Aries. So these are the parts of your chart you're going to be watching. Now, again, we will see Mercury leave the pre-retrograde shadow time May 13th. So I still think that anything that came into your realm around um, March 18th, which is when Mercury went into pre-retrograde shadow time at that 15 degrees of Aries, then May 13th, it brings the whole thing to a close and you can feel really solid about any plans that you've made being able to move themselves forward. So definitely got a retrograde day going on there. And if you also keep in mind that when a planet is stationing or coming direct or retrograde, these days can be a bit bumpy. Just make some space. Just make some space for, you know, the computer to still crash. Make sure you have that thing backed up. Um, make a little space for still needing to be reassessing something and not feeling quite sure about the information. Okay, so just make a little bit of space there. Okay, now as we're traveling here on Friday, first of all, we did see the moon move on. We had a void, of course, period on Thursday, very short, and the moon moved into Sagittarius. Now, this is all later in the day on Thursday, so we moved the moon from that scorpionic depth. We're back. It's like, I'm back. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys have seen this little clip that sometimes is on Instagram and sometimes it's, you know, whatever. It's a little clip and it's this um, raccoon, this little raccoon, and he climbs up out of the, <laughs> the trash can and he like slides the doors open and he's just standing there like that. That's sometimes how I feel about the moon in Sagittarius and it, it says I'm back again. <laughs> That's sometimes how we feel when the moon comes out of Sagittarius or into Sagittarius because in Scorpio, it's just been so deep. Now, we learned a lot of information while the moon was in Scorpio. We got to the depth. We got to the root of what was going on. And now with that wisdom at an emotional level, we can ask ourselves with the moon in Sagittarius, is there something I'm not being honest with myself about? Is there a greater truth here? Is there a bigger picture that, you know, I need to be considering in order to be, you know, really being honest? What is the next adventure I want to go on? Is my life the adventure that I want it to be? Where do I need to learn something that is maybe a little bit foreign from me to include a different perspective? Sometimes I think we think with Sagittarius energy, you have to go all the way to Bali or you have to go to Panama to like learn these great lessons, which I always support eating food that is foreign to you when the moon is in Sagittarius to have that experience. But sometimes the greatest adventure that we go on is seeing something from a different perspective than our own and understanding it, being willing to actually engage it. That's what stretches our horizons. Now, for some of you too, depending on what lunar phase you were born in, and what lunar phase your life is in, what season of life you are in right now, this moon in Sagittarius may be really, really great for you to do a lot of yoga, to bring in a lot of meditation over the next couple days. So make some space for yourself to be able to do that um, if that is you. And if you're not sure what lunar phase you were born in and what that means and all that good stuff, I've got a, a digital course down below. You can check that out. And I work with the lunar phases heavy, heavy, heavy. So if you're one of my clients, you are, <laughs> I've already beat you to death with it, right? Okay, now when we get here on Friday, that moon is traveling in Sagittarius. Not huge amounts of aspects with other things, so it's a pretty calm day. I think that Friday is gets to be a Friday, Friday, but it's also the loosening of that spring we've been talking about all week where it's like, you know, you feel like you can finally exhale in that way. I haven't seen waiting to exhale in a long time. Okay, Saturday. Now we've got the moon still traveling in Sagittarius, but this moon is running into Mars. Okay, so as we're going to deal with the moon on Saturday, first of all, it's bringing a lot of energy to the table. And it's going to be like there's a bit more intensity. And we also see that Venus is getting involved in this conversation um, as well here. So what I would tell you is, 
First of all, Venus Mars energy can just be hot and spicy. It's the lovers traveling together in conversation in each other's vibe. But then you add in an adventurous moon. So this could be the day where you're putting on your your flower, you know, your feria flower, and you're like, I just need to feel a little spice today. So if that's what's going on for you here on Saturday, the only thing I would tell you is that it is good. You know, you can have a good time, maybe do something with friends, do something that's really, really pleasurable for you. But the one thing I would say is if you meet someone, whether it's friendship, certainly if it's romance, um, just be mindful of getting all the details, okay? And what I mean is you meet somebody at an event, it's lovely, you guys hit it off, it's limerence, it's infatuation, it's some beautiful intense energy at first connection. Make sure that that person is available to be making that connection. Make sure you are available to be making that connection because sometimes, you know, the energy can just be a little too good, and we want good, but sometimes it could be like too good. Now, the moon is going to move into this vibration of Capricorn. And I think that that will be absolutely helpful for us. But that's not really going to be as helpful until we get to Sunday. So Saturday, just make sure everybody has some clarity. Now, speaking of clarity, when we do get over here to Sunday, First of all, the moon moves into the vibration of Capricorn, okay? So we get a little bit of grounded. We've left the infatuation going on an adventure. I'm trying something or someone out of my comfort zone, right? And back to business. Back to business, okay? The moon's like, thank you, that was fun. Get back, get back to business. So we become a bit more grounded when the moon is in Capricorn. Okay, now first of all, one of the questions I think about when the moon moves into Capricorn is what do you need to delegate? What are you taking on? You're doing too much, too much, too much, and you need to act like more of a smart manager in your life. And there are tasks that can be delegated. What is it? Including your thinking. What are you like thinking, thinking, thinking about? And you're like not going to be able to figure that thing out. Where can you hand that off to your higher self, higher power, whatever you call that, right? Allow there to be a rebranding and a restructuring for the week. Rebranding. This makes me think about this from an emotional level. To get ready for your week, I know I'm a Virgo rising, but the moon in Capricorn could be a really great thing on Sunday for you to honestly lay out your clothes for the week prep their food for the week? What makes you feel like you're going to go into your week solid, steady, on new foundations, focused, and ready to be in your life, not just surviving your life? This is a great energy to consider there. Now, later in the day on Sunday, we are going to see that Mars comes into a conjunction with Neptune over here in Pisces. Okay. All right. So we've got, we've got Mars, the action. I want to get it done. I want to do stuff kind of energy, but it's not in Aries yet. It's still driving in this Piscean vibration, right? And then it's going to come into conjunction with Neptune, which is pure watery. It's all this watery. Now, first of all, let's talk about the, the super fun parts about this. I think that Mars and Neptune, when they come together, oh, it's so sensual. It's like like you're feeling your body, your senses in a in from a place. Like it comes from in between the worlds, right? It's like like pouring in from the ethers is almost the sense that I get. That's great. Like, I love that for us. Get into it. Feel yourself. Feel your sensitivity. Feel the heightened sensitivity that is coming around you. I would highly suggest if you are available to do it, do it without drugs or alcohol or changing your state if that's something that you're available to do. And there's energy. There's enthusiasm for spiritual work, for creativity, for singing, for giving people the benefit of the doubt, for this level of kindness and ease and real compassion that I think can go into it. And you're courageous about it because Mars is there. You're like, I'm like a spiritual warrior today. Welcome to my Sunday. <laughs> I forgive you. We got to heal this because only hurt people hurt people. You know, you're really in that vibration. So that's one um that's one aspect of it. And it's great because it continues to loosen that spring, right? You know, when I forgive other people, like genuinely forgive them, I'm the one who's freed. Whether they can do what they want with their freedom, but I get freed, right? But here's the other side about this. Neptune and Mars together, they can get delusional. It's delusional. Like you've got a story going up in your head about what's real, what's going on, and you can't see to the other side of it. It's almost like you need someone else to tell you or to give you feedback. And one of the ways that this can present itself is, is sure, paranoia, 
is absolutely one of them. Uh, hypochondriasm can come in, but this is the one I think is, is the most important to pay attention to. You feel like you're so spiritually advanced and developed that you just can't with this other person because they're not growing and advancing like you are. And this is really challenging because when it comes at you like that, that is a sure sign that that's like some ego stuff, right? Because if you were really genuinely more spiritually advanced than the person that you're talking about, it would come out as forgiveness. It would come out as an ease and an understanding where that person is. So you have to watch out for the negatives of this, you know, because the deception here is then the deception of self. And if I'm lying to me, the rest of you are screwed, right? If I'm making decisions in my life that I think are real, but it's it's not like, because what happens to me is I'm going to share this example with you and we're going to wrap up this weekly. What happens for me is like delusion works for me like this. You remember those TVs where you could like have the, the one show in the middle and then the tiny square on the other side where you could watch a different program? Okay. All right. So the big square is my life. <laughs> so what's happening in my life is I'm like in the cooking channel, right? I'm supposed to be in the kitchen cooking, making a little chimchurri, little steak bites, maybe vegetarian cauliflower bites. Okay. Right. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. But delusion is the small screen. And on the small screen, it's showing me a football game, right? I'm talking American football. Okay, they're showing me an American football game and I'm believing it. I'm in the kitchen buying the story that we're really in a football game. This is not the kitchen. This is the football game. So I'm making football decisions in the kitchen and wondering why my life is going sideways, why people are mad at me and I am not in reality. But this is the thing. I can't tell that this is the football game is the delusion. It's a completely made up um, space that it's not real. But then I make decisions out of a fake place in my real life. And that creates challenge. So one of the things I would tell you is if you've got some big decision, it has to be done. It has to be made. You have to invest in this, whatever. I would just, if you can say it out loud to another person, because another person will likely be able to hear your delusion. The last thing I want to say about this is this Mars Neptune is you're feeling like you want to do good, right? Because we're in the space of the spiritual warrior and someone could be taking advantage of your kindness. So be clear, be clear. We, we practice this week with the Scorpio energy. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is driving that? And if it is for you to get something, be something, have something, you're afraid you're going to lose something. If that gets involved over here, the person taking advantage of you or your generosity is going to pick up on that, that unclear weakness and really take advantage of it. So watch out for the emotional vampires and things like that. That could be coming around as well. But instead, Enjoy the sensitivity, enjoy the sensuality that I think can come with that. And really, truly, you know, have some yoga, have some whatever allows you to loosen your spring, get free in your soul, free the energy from your body. If you're not practicing somatic release um, techniques, I would highly invite that to you. And if you don't know what that is, Uranus and Taurus brought many of our somatic practitioners out of the woodworks because it's like needing to shake and release extra energy from your body so that your body's not holding on to it. So whatever gets you free this week, I look forward to you sharing that with me, if you would, in the comment section down below. All right, my beautiful friends, if you haven't watched your full moon in Scorpio video, please go check that out next. Also, if you have not watched your lunar return video or you're curious about what happens when you have one, check that out over here. And I will also make sure in the description box down below is the link to my natal and progressed lunar phases because that tells you more about what's going on in your world than any one of these transits reports that any of us can give you. Beautiful friends. I love you. I'm feeling spicy and I'll be thinking about you all week. Bye.